Welcome to the Uzumaki Garage. In this episode, I'm doing the timing belt service on a Mitsubishi Evolution 6. The engine's still in the car, I'm not using a hoist, the car's on jack stands, in the real world. Let's see how we go. I've changed a few EVO timing belts in the past, and I'm usually guided by the YouTube videos made by Paul at Boosted Films, along with the Mitsubishi service manual. This was a big episode to take on, but I wanted to share my procedure sequence and handy tips, and also keep it as a reference for next time I do a timing belt service. Disclaimers for this video. Don't do anything on your car that is beyond your ability. Working on cars is dangerous, and if you do something wrong, you can easily destroy your engine. Do your own research on torque settings, I'm not a certified mechanic, so you should watch this video for entertainment purposes only. I've parked the car on a flat concrete floor and chocked the wheels. I lift the car with a trolley jack under the front member, push the jack stands in directly under the pinch weld, slide the adapter along the pinch weld into position, then lift the jack stand up into place, which holds the adapter in position, straddling the pinch weld. I then slowly and carefully lower the car while making sure everything is centered and perfect. To learn how to make pinch weld protectors, click the link in the video description. I chocked the wheel and used a breaker bar to loosen the wheel nuts on the front right hand wheel, using a 21mm socket. Removing the negative cable from the battery terminal, and draining the coolant. Disconnect the AC hose from the AC dryer bracket. Disconnect the power steering hose from the engine mount. Remove four bolts from the upper timing belt cover, making note of their different lengths. And removing the cover. Lift off the radiator reservoir cap and hose. Lift out the radiator reservoir. Disconnect the radiator hose from the reservoir cap and remove the fuse box mounting bolt. Remove three bolts from the reservoir bracket. Remove the bolt from the AC dryer clamp. Remove the bolts from the AC dryer bracket. And remove the connector from the AC dryer. Unbolt the power steering reservoir. And remove the exhaust manifold heat shield. And here I'm supporting the weight of the engine so the engine mount can be removed. Removing the engine mount. Now is a good time to loosen the water pump pulley bolts. Then I use a half inch drive handle to rotate the ox belt tensioner anti-clockwise while I slide in a Phillips head screwdriver into the tensioner to keep the belt slack. Then I remove the belt. 
rotate anti-clockwise again to take up the strain and remove the screwdriver, and back the tensioner off. Unbolt the tensioner and remove it. And remove the water pump pulley bolts. I'm holding the crankshaft with a half inch drive handle to remove the four bolts from the crankshaft pulley. I'm removing the lower timing belt cover now, taking notice of the different length bolts in it. And removing the middle timing belt cover. And here I'm releasing the AC pipe from the chassis rail. 12mm socket on a long extension. And this is the power steering pump removal section. First I'm removing the pump heat shield. Unclip this wire. Remove one bolt which is accessed from under the exhaust manifold. The other two bolts are on the opposite side of the pump and you get to them through the holes in the pump's pulley. This bolt is removed with a quarter inch ratchet handle, deep socket and short extension. The third bolt at the six o'clock position is difficult. I used a small ratchet to remove it, but when I replaced it later in this video, I used a different tool, which was a lot easier. And finally, lifting out the pump. And now I'm removing the bracket. It's pretty tight, so I'm using a breaker bar. Disconnecting the harness, removing coils and spark plugs. The timing belt. I rotated the crank around until cylinder number one is at top dead center and checked all the timing marks were lined up. Crank sensing blade mark to the case. Oil pump sprocket to the triangle. Rear balance shaft sprocket to its mark. You need to get used to these marks and keep an eye on them. When all the marks are lined up, including the cam gear to the valve cover marks, lock the cams in position with the Evo Cam Gear Special Tool. And once it's in, wrap some cable ties around it to make sure it stays in place. I'm loosening the timing belt tensioner pulley bolt using a 14mm socket. Loosen both timing belt tensioner bolts with a 12mm socket. Loosen the timing belt tensioner arm bolt using a 12mm socket. And now you can remove the old timing belt. Remove the timing belt tensioner pulley. And remove the timing belt hydraulic tensioner. And remove the tensioner's arm. Removing the idler pulley. Remove the alternator bracket so you can swing the alternator out of the way.
Now I'm loosening the water pump bolts using a 3 8 ratchet, short extension and 12mm socket. I loosen the last bolt from under the car. Take out the bolts, making note of their different lengths. Pull the pump away from the block and pry it off the water pipe behind it. Then I loosen the mounting nut on the rear of the alternator. Best access was from the engine bay under the inlet manifold, using a 14mm socket on a ratchet with a short extension to clear the dipstick tube. Rolling the alternator to the left gave me better access to remove the old gasket and install a new pump. I removed the old gasket from the block with a razor blade and scrubbed it clean with some scotch brite, then some brake cleaner. And removed the old water pipe o-ring. The new water pump came with a new o-ring and new gasket. I put a bit of Vaseline on the o-ring to help install it on the water pipe. I used some aviation sealant on the block and on the water pump. Then I waited a few minutes before placing the gasket on the water pump. I'm pushing the water pump onto the block now, which also pushes it onto the water pipe. Bolting up the water pump. With the engine mount removed, you can get much better access and it's easy to torque up all the bolts. Swing the alternator back into position, replace the bracket and tighten these bolts. Using this torque wrench with a short extension, I could even tighten the alternator's rear nut properly. Now I'm removing the crank angle sensor. The rear balance belt. Before I start, I take note of the bolt hole orientation of this pulley. Loosening the balance belt tensioner. Using an impact wrench, I'm removing the crankshaft bolt and sprocket. Removing the crankshaft sensing blade and removing the balance shaft belt. Installing the new balance shaft belt while keeping the marks aligned. Keep checking the marks on the crankshaft sprocket and the balance belt sprocket. Here I'm installing the tensioner pulley while keeping the marks aligned. I'm rotating the tensioner pulley clockwise with my hand, holding it and tightening the bolt. Then I check the marks are still aligned. I torque the bolt to 19 Newton meters. I don't have a belt deflection measuring tool, so I use a ruler or a 5mm Allen key to visually check for 5mm of movement and a sharpie mark on the case. I make sure these points remain lined up after the tension is set. If they aren't lined up, you have to start over and try again. Replacing the crankshaft sensing blade and the crankshaft sprocket. Crank angle sensor. I'm replacing the crank angle sensor with a new one. It's the perfect time to do it. I'm tightening the bolts to 9 Newton meters with a quarter inch drive torque wrench. And now back to the timing belt. I'm installing a new timing belt idler pulley end bolt.
tightened to 48 newton meters. I apply a dab of grease to the tensioner arm pivot. Replace its washer and bolt. Make sure you have this correct movement before you tighten it up. Tighten the bolt to 24 newton meters. Install a new timing belt tension pulley onto the tensioner arm. Orientate the two holes on the pulley like this. Install the new timing belt tensioner. This tensioner is actually the upgraded version, which was designed for the EVO 9. I tighten the two tensioner bolts to 24 newton meters. Install the crankshaft sprocket bolt. And here's a warning. The oil pump sprocket is the tricky one. Just because the pulley is on its mark, you can't assume it's correct. You can reset its position as described in the service manual, or use the well-known shortcut where you test if the paint dot falls towards or away from its mark. If this doesn't make sense to you, do some more research because it's very important to set the oil pump sprocket properly. Putting the timing belt on the sprockets. Make sure the marks are still lined up. Secure the belt to the cam gear with a zip tie. And now to tension the belt. Remove the access plug. I screw the special tool in until the pin is loose in the tensioner. The grenade pin should slide freely in and out. Sit the pulley special tool into the tensioner pulley holes. Apply 5 newton meters of any clockwise force on the pulley, then back it off. Then hold 3.5 newton meters of force on the tensioner pulley and tighten the pulley bolt. I'm not using a torque wrench here on the pulley tool as I can't get enough access to tighten the pulley bolt while the torque wrench is on the tensioner tool. I'm just working from experience until I get a smaller torque wrench. Then torque the pulley bolt to 49 newton meters from underneath the car. The pin can still slide freely. Remove the rod. Now I'm checking all the sprocket marks again. Crankshaft, oil pump sprocket, balance shaft sprocket, exhaust cam, and inlet cam. They're all lined up so I can now remove the cam lock. Rotate the crank two full turns, but for better control it's best not to use a ratchet on this. Wait for 15 minutes and check the grenade pin can slide into the tensioner. I put a bend in this pin so I can get past the chassis rail easier. And reinstall the engine mount. Tightening the crankshaft sprocket. Grab your Izumaki Garage crank lock tool. If you don't have a crank lock tool, but you think it looks like a good thing, have a look in the video description, where I'll have a link to the other video I made that shows you how to make your own crank lock tool. Using the crank lock tool, I can now tighten the crankshaft sprocket bolt to precisely 118 newton meters without the crankshaft turning and without the risk of over tightening it with an impact wrench. Reinstalling the power steering pump. I reinstalled the power steering pump bracket and tightened to 49 newton meters. Lowering the pump into place. Putting in the first bolt. This is the easy one. The next bolt goes under the pump. I flip it over like this and feed it into the hole and screw it in. The third bolt is fed through the pulley, the bracket and into the pump. and screw it in with a 10mm deep socket on a quarter inch drive. Next I use a 3 8 flex handle with a short 12mm socket to go through the pulley to tighten the bottom bolt. The bottom bolt is hard to get to on. Feed it into the pulley, rotate the pulley around, put the handle on an angle and you can tighten it up. 
You'll probably need to put your hand under the pump, just like before, to guide the socket onto the bolt. A 12 point socket would no doubt be easier. Reattach the electrical connectors and reinstall the heat shield. And reinstall the exhaust manifold heat shield. I cleaned up the timing belt covers and installed the lower cover. And next I'm installing the centre timing belt cover and all four of its bolts, but I only tightened the two lower bolts. Water pump pulley. This part of the job can be very frustrating, but I have a few tips that will help. To get better access to the water pump pulley, support the engine with the trolley jack and remove the engine mount again. I temporarily use a long bolt to hold the pulley loosely on the water pump. Rotate the pulley 90 degrees. Then I put a real pulley bolt into a socket and lightly screw it in. Rotate the pulley 90 degrees. Install another short bolt. Rotate the pulley 90 degrees. Install another pulley bolt. Remove the temporary long bolt and install the final bolt. Screw the bolts all the way in from above. Then from underneath I'm using a strap wrench to hold the water pump pulley while I tighten the bolts with a zero offset wrench. Tighten, rotate, repeat until they're all done. Upper timing belt cover. Remove the top two screws from the centre timing belt cover, replace the top cover and install the four screws. So that's all the main things done that I wanted to cover in detail for this video. The next installs were the engine mount, the aux belt pulleys, tensioner and belt, and all the other fiddly things listed here that I removed to get better access to the timing belt. And now the engine bay looks like this. And now I'm replacing the plugs, coils and coolant. Well that turned out really well. Doing the timing belt service without a hoist really isn't bad. If you're not using someone else's hoist, you can take your time doing it, do a thorough job, you can even enjoy doing the work. If you learned something or got a better way to do it, let me know in the comments. If you want to see some more videos about cool JDM cars, hit the subscribe button and notify bell and I'll let you know when the next one comes out. And finally, thanks for sticking around till the end. If you're really feeling excited, you can help me out by donating something to my Patreon. See you next time. Cheers.